So for this video, we're going to use everybody's favorite, the big ass attenuator. Now we use this attenuator to feed a signal in here and reduce its power output to something lower. In the case of the big ass attenuator, it's good for up to 100 watts and it does 40 dB of attenuation. So it reduces our signal from our amplifier and then will allow us to inject the signal into our test equipment. When we do that, we can get a good measurement and see our spurious emissions. And for the test equipment, we're going to use this tiny SA Ultra, and then we're going to connect this up to the computer so we can get a better view of the screen. Now, 40 dB is not going to be enough attenuation for this particular test, so I'm going to hook a second attenuator. And this is the little ass attenuator, and this is an SMA base connector. These are end type connectors. And this has uh, 10 watts of power handling capability and 10 dB of attenuation. So when I, can, when I combine these two together, what I get is 50 dB of attenuation. PCBWay.com is a great place to look if you need fabrication services. They have everything from flexible to rigid PCBs, CNC machining, and even 3D printing. They also have a parts store where you can get the parts and components that you need for your project. They can even install these on your PCBs. Take advantage of PCBWay.com's PCB Prototype Assembly Services. They're fast, efficient, and inexpensive. And if you have questions, PCBWay.com has answers. Check out their help portal, where they can answer your questions for all your project needs. Okay, and this is what we would call a total mess, but let's go over it. So here we have the IC705, and it's running off of battery power, which is fine, because we're only using a few watts to go into our amplifier. Coming out of the antenna port, you can see that right here, I've got this RG316 cable that runs in and goes into the amplifier. Coming out of the amplifier, we have a connector and then we have another RG316 that comes down here and goes into an adapter and then goes into the big ass attenuator that goes into the small ass attenuator. This whole configuration mess goes out into the tiny SA. That way you can play along at home and you can recreate this. Hopefully your environment isn't this messy. Okay, we're set up, and over here, you can see the screen of the Tiny SA. I've already configured the Tiny SA to account for our 50 dB of attenuation, and I've put it in harmonic mode. That way we can test harmonics and spurious emissions. I've got videos that show how to do this, so I'm not showing it here for brevity, but I'll link those videos below because I'm a really nice guy. All right, so we're set up, and we are on a frequency of 14.150, and I'm just doing this to show you how we're going to conduct the test. Here you can see my microphone at the bottom part of the screen, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to key up. Now when we key this up, the tiny SA is getting some measurements from the amplifier, and it needs a second to kind of sort itself out to get a true and accurate measurement. That's happening right now. So I've got about 2 watts coming out of the IC705, and we've got 28.3 watts coming out of the amplifier, give or take. That .3 is bouncing around a little bit. And what you can see on the screen is where peak number one is. That's called our fundamental uh, emission. So that's the frequency we're transmitting on. And it's showing us a signal power of 44.4 .4 dBm. And that sounds about right to me. Points three, five, and seven are spurious emissions or harmonics. And when you take a look at those in the data table, the yellow text at the top part of the tiny SA screen, you can see that all of those are about negative 51, negative 55, negative 59 dBC. The reason it's dBC, it's decibels in comparison to the fundamental, and all of them are more than 40 dB down from the fundamental. So that would mean that on 20 meters, this passes. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna let off the key so nothing gets hot and overheats. And I'm going to test a couple of different bands at a couple of different power levels and see if the power levels affect anything. And then I'm going to come back and show you the results. So stay tuned. Okay, so here you can see some of the results that we captured. The way we're going to look at this slide, if you look at the title, you'll see that it says 80 meters. The frequency is 3.750 megahertz, and we ran the test at 20 watts. Now keep in mind, any spurious emissions or harmonics need to be negative 43 below the fundamental. And then when we take a look at this, uh, we see our fundamental at point number one, and it's clean. We're good on 80 at 20 watts. Here is 80 at 50 watts, and when you take a look at this one, it's clean as well. Here is the 40 meter band at 20 watts, and it looks good. The 40 meter band at 50 watts looks good. 
Here's where we start to run into some problems. Taking a look at the 30 meter band at a frequency of 10.125 megahertz at 20 watts, you can see that the harmonic on marker number three is negative 38.4 dBC, and that is not good. So it does not pass on 30 meters at 20 watts. Nor does it pass on 30 meters at 50 watts. You can see that uh, the, the third harmonic is at negative 37.1 dBC, and that's a shame. <clears throat> Here we are at 20 meters, and if you take a look, we are at frequency 14.175, 20 watts, and we're good. 20 meters at 50 watts, and we're good. Here's 15 meters. The frequency was 21.225 at 20 watts. And again, you can see that pesky third harmonic. It's important to remember the third harmonic is typically the one that gives folks problems. And when we take a look at this, uh, third harmonic is negative 36.4 dBC, and that means this is not uh, legal for use on the 15 meter band at 20 watts. Here are our results at 50 watts. And again, the third harmonic does not pass. Here we are at 10 meters, frequency of 28.3, 20 watts. And if you take a look at it, our third harmonic is negative 42.2 dBC. Now, I'm going to call this one in the margin of error of the equipment. Maybe there were some things going on here that were a little bit goofy. Um, that's close enough for me, but technically that would be a fail. But uh, we're going to call this one close enough. And then here is the same reading on 10 meters, 28.3 at 50 watts. And you can see that now it is negative 41.7 dBC. So it's even a little bit closer. So, um, you know, I'm going to give it a pass because I like it. But uh, technically, this one's a fail. So you could say or you could make a case or an argument that uh, 10 meters is not clean either. And uh, I, I, would, I would agree with you. I would say that this one is right on the cusp. Anyhow, I like this uh, amplifier. Um, I'll probably use it on 20 and 40. Uh, I don't want to operate on 80. So um, for me, it's a useful device, but uh, I am a little disappointed that we had the problems on 10, 15, and 30. Anyhow, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond.